Hello students, myself Mr. Norman Fernandez from the Department of Physics at Alva SPO College. So students, welcome to the class for today. So today's part will be the introduction to physics. Let us see students what and all things are there in today's session. Yes students, so we are going to begin with the session for today with the topic introduction to physics. So let us see what and all things we are having for today. Right now we can look at some pictures which have been displayed over here. So let us see what they are. Firstly we have a cell phone. Then followed by this over here we have movement of the cars. Here we can see students, two people are doing some research in the laboratory. Here we are having a glider. Here we have a natural phenomena that is the lightning. This picture shows the situation of how a rainbow occurs. And in these last three pictures, we can see some measuring devices. First one, we call it by a word known as screw gauge. Secondly, we have a vernier calipers. And third one is a foot ruler. All these three are essentially the measuring devices which we usually come across in the subject of physics, especially in the laboratory work. So this one, that is the screw gauge, is a setup which is useful when we measure thickness of objects of the order of millimeter. The vernier calipers, as we see here, is a setup which is useful for measuring things of the order of centimeter. So as we have seen all these pictures right now, this is how I go to start with the topic. So my dear students, let us see right now what is actually physics. Physics happens to be the study of various physical phenomena and the fundamental laws governing them. The word physics comes from the Greek word fuses, meaning nature. So students, let us explore some questions based on the topic physics. Here goes the first question. Why does the rainbow have a specific color in a specific pattern like this. Secondly, why do the stars twinkle this way? Why the day and night cycle So all these questions leads towards curiosity and curiosity leads us towards science. The word science originated from the Latin word scientia and students the meaning of this one is to know. The scientific method involved has several steps which follow like this one after the other. Let us see them right now students. First one is the systematic observations followed by controlled experiments and model making. Thirdly, we have qualitative and quantitative reasoning 
and lastly the theoretical calculations for prediction and verification. So students here we begin with the first process that is the systematic observations. An example for this happens to be the laws of planetary motion given by Kepler. Secondly, controlled experiments and model making. An example for this happens to be the atomic model given by Neil Bohr. So what we are having in this atomic model happens to be the centrally located nucleus which comprises of protons and the neutrons and the electrons are going around in their own orbits around the nucleus in an atom. Then followed by this one will be the qualitative and quantitative reasoning. An example for this goes based on the photoelectric effect using quantum theory which was given by the famous scientist Albert Einstein. What he said was like this, when light photons are made to be incident on suitable metal surfaces, electrons were found to be ejected from the surface. And for this typical explanation given by him, fetched him the Nobel Prize in Physics. And lastly, we have the theoretical calculations for prediction and verification. An example for this happens to be the experiment based on scattering of alpha particles by Rutherford, which led to the nuclear atom model. As we can see here, there happens to be a target nucleus when incident beam of alpha particles were found to be coming in its way, some of them had deviations in their respective directions. So all these typical situations, my dear students, we are going to learn them in detail in various topics. It can be of first PUC or it may be when it comes to second PUC also. So students, let us see what are the branches of physics that we are having. Right now on this side we have the classical physics and classical physics it means to say the one which was developed before the 19th century namely the classical mechanics, waves, thermodynamics, electromagnetism and optics. And the second classification my dear students goes this way by the term known as modern physics which was developed especially after the 19th century and in this we are having the sub units namely the atomic physics, nuclear physics and the quantum mechanics. So let us see little bit in detail about these parts one by one. Classical mechanics as it is defined this way, it happens to be the study of effects produced by a force. Yes, my dear students, here we see the movement of a car in this first picture. Secondly, we have loading on a typical bridge. I mean to say on a bridge like this, there are various vehicles which are moving. Thirdly happens to be the working of hydraulic machines. Then we have waves and the meaning of this goes this way. It means to say it is the study of effects produced by 
vibration or an oscillation. Few typical examples go like this. In the first one, we have oscillation of a pendulum. Secondly, we find a person playing with a violin or it can be any musical instrument, the sound produced by those. And thirdly, we are having a fighter jet, a noise produced by the same. All this comes under the classification of the part waves. Then followed by that, we have thermodynamics. So it is a branch of physics which happens to be based on the effects produced by heat. Firstly, in this we observe the picture of a thermometer. Secondly, we have engine, how the working of that happens. Thirdly, happens to be a refrigerator which we all have at our homes. Then followed by that will be the branch of physics electromagnetism which happens to be the study of effects produced by a charge or a magnet. Typical illustrations for this are as follows. First one we have a lightning stroke which is a very common situation during this season. Secondly, we have a heater and in the last picture we have a windmill wherein generation of electricity takes place. Next part of physics happens to be the optics wherein it is the study of effects produced by a light. Yes, my dear students, we always observe ourselves in front of plain mirrors every day to observe how we appear. Secondly, we have the appearance of the sky, especially when it is the late sunset, wherein we can observe the color to be typically orange and thirdly here we see the colors which are exhibited by soap bubbles. Followed by that will be atomic physics which happens to be the study of the structure of an atom and characterizes subatomic particles. In the first picture, we have a neon sign board, something like this, which we usually come across shopping centers and big malls. A display board, somewhat of this typical type. In the second picture, we observe a laser. And in the third one, a CFL which is popularly known as compact fluorescent light. Then followed by that will be the nuclear physics. So nuclear physics happens to be the study of an atomic nuclei and their constituent particles. In the first picture we can observe a nuclear reactor wherein it is typically used to generate power. In the second picture, we have something called carbon dating. Yes, my dear students, this is a typical technique which is very useful if we want to know a typical animal or a bird which was extinct thousands and thousands of years ago. A small portion of it is enough for the scientists to predict when exactly they survived on this planet. And lastly, we have radiotherapy, 
the one which we come across in hospitals and lastly followed by quantum mechanics which happens to be the study based on the behavior of matter and energy at atomic scale. So, who does not know about a smartphone my dear students in this present technology of ours. Secondly, we have an electron microscope which gives a good resolution in terms of an atomic scale measurement. And thirdly, we have once again a very sophisticated device, the magnetic resonance imaging popularly known as MRI scans which is employed in hospitals. So students, let us see what are the fundamental forces in nature that we have. First one goes like this with the gravitational force. Secondly, the electromagnetic force. Then we have the strong nuclear force. Followed by this will be the weak nuclear force. Let us begin with the first one right now. The gravitational force is the one which in fact binds the solar system. A typical example has been illustrated like this over here right now. This will be the sun located at a particular position in our solar system and this is the representation of a planet. This typical planet will be describing its own typical path. If it is the planet earth, it may take a year that is around 365 days to go around the entire orbit. Then followed by this will be the second one which happens to be the electromagnetic force which is binding the atoms. Yes, my dear students, here we observe the centrally located portion of an atom which represents the nucleus and revolving in their own orbits are the electrons. Thirdly, we have the strong nuclear force which is useful for binding the nucleus itself. And in the last situation, we have a weak nuclear force which is taking place in a radioactive decay. So all these four parts of forces we come across in different parts of the subject throughout our study of first as well as second PUC. So students, let us begin with some physicists and their major contributions. So firstly, we have Archimedes. This person is very famous for his two discoveries, namely the principle of buoyancy and the principle of lever. So when it comes to the first picture, who does not know the story of Eureka? In the second picture, this famous personality gave a quote which goes like this, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. Then we have Galileo Galilei who is famous for his law of inertia. In this picture we have a moving vehicle wherein we can observe that when the driver of the vehicle applied the brakes suddenly, all these passengers had a jerk 
in the forward direction. Then we have Isaac Newton for his famous law of gravitation as well as laws of motion. Followed by him happens to be Kelvin who is famous for his work based on absolute scale of temperature which is presently known as the Kelvin scale when it comes to the measurement of temperature. After that we have Bernoulli who is famous for his theorem namely the Bernoulli's theorem. Followed by him is Michael Faraday who is famous for his works based on the laws of electromagnetic induction. Then followed by him will be Christian Huygens who gave the wave theory of light. After that followed by James Maxwell who gave the electromagnetic theory. In this representation of that part of the theory we have the light which is propagating along the x direction and if these are the y and z axis respectively it so happens that the electric field and the magnetic field will be oscillating at right angles with respect to each other. After that we have Mary Curie who is well known for her discovery based on the elements namely the radium and polonium and also the studies based on natural radioactivity. Then we have Roentgen who is famous for his works based on X-rays which happens to be a very useful tool in hospital technology. Then we have the Albert Einstein, one of the greatest scientists of that century who gave the theory of relativity and the explanation for photoelectric effect for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Then we come across with J.J. Thomson who discovered electron, one of the subatomic particles. And here we have C. V. Raman, the only Indian scientist who comes in this particular group and is famous for his inelastic scattering of light by molecules which is presently known as Raman effect. So my dear students let us see right now some technologies with its scientific principle that is being involved. Firstly we can observe a steam engine. Yes, the technology behind the steam engine goes with the scientific principle based on the laws of thermodynamics. Then we have the representation of a nuclear reactor. The technology behind nuclear reactor has the scientific principle which is the controlled nuclear fission process. Followed by that happens to be the television and radio 
and these have the scientific principle involved this way with the generation and propagation detection of electromagnetic waves. So here we have a computer. The principle behind this happens to be the digital logic. Then comes with a laser. The principle behind this happens to be light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Here goes the rocket propulsion and behind this happens to be the laws of motion given by Newton. And in this picture we have an electric generator. Yes, my dear students, so the principle behind this happens to be the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. In this picture, we have a hydroelectric power system wherein in a stored dam, there happens to be water situated at a particular height and from here onwards, what actually takes place is the following principle based on conversion of gravitational potential energy into electrical energy. Then goes an aeroplane and the movement of this aircraft is in fact based on the principle behind Bernoulli's theorem. And lastly, we have an optical fiber and through this tiny optical fibers, we have the principle behind it which takes place based on total internal reflection and it is because of these optical fiber cables that we are having a good data connectivity wherein you can presently send high speed data within fraction of a second to any part of the world. So yes my dear students, let us see one illustration right now in our daily life where we come across in reality. You can see over here a camera and here we have our natural eye system. So while you are reading this article, what we did few minutes ago, the working of your eye is similar to the working of a camera which again belongs to physics. And here we conclude like this at the moment. Physics is the most fundamental of the sciences. Physics is indeed beautiful. Physics teaches us to think. Physics gives us a new appreciation of the world around us. Thank you.